Hey! Hey, y'all doing? It's Friday, baby! Y'all know what that shit means! We done made it through the whole week! A week full of crap! Every time, every week is, buddy, ever since the man got in office! It's been a shit storm every week! We survived another one. And y'all know the routine there. Y'all go ahead and fire up that big old bong and take a big old hit and blow it towards the screen. Open that beer and get a good swig. I'm trying, baby. I'm trying. Y'all aren't blowing hard enough. It's not coming through the mic. Y'all need to blow harder. That's right, baby. It's Beer and Bud Friday. Get it going. We put up with enough crap. It's time to relax. When it's time to indict, one thing is clear. Mueller's here. That's right, baby. It's indictment time. Old Paul Manafort's up there having a trial. Ain't that some shit? Mm -mm -mm. We'll get to that in a minute. I got everything laid out in my book here. I'm trying to keep everything in line. I want to give a big shout out to about over 2,000, almost 3,000 people who in just the last week have decided to come along and, and subscribe to our YouTube channel of Blue Dot in Texas. We passed over 7,000 subscribers today. I'm just tickled to death every time I look at it. That thing's bumping up, and it just it just makes me full of pride, and I'm just so happy to have so many Blue Dot family members joining the crowd, baby, so y'all welcome, and uh, I appreciate y'all subscribing. What's been going on before I get started? Where'd I get this shirt, baby? And this is probably the only time I'm going to get to wear this shirt. It is Developers of the Future. Developers of the Future. And if you don't know, let's take a close look at that. That's the San Francisco skyline. That's how come I, I know I'm only going to be able to wear this one time. Thank you, April Chartrand out in San Francisco. April is a very active uh, social justice advocate out in San Francisco. She just went to a summit. Every time she goes to one of these summits, she sends me all the information. This was the Summer Equity Summit. As a matter of fact, last she sent me one of these shirts from the Equity Summit from last year, I think. She is uh, very involved. In her letter, she, does, she talks about, uh, because she's very concerned in, in the social justice, especially in the black community, out in San Francisco, you know, where people get get have the 911 call because you're barbecuing in the park or, oh, my God, you're selling a bottle of water on the street. You're a little girl, but uh, -uh you're black. You can't do that. Some idiot's going to call 911. And uh, several of those events happened out in San Francisco. And April is concerned with the the amount of racism that has shown its ugly head since that idiot got in our house. And everybody knows that's a true fact. Ever since this idiot got in there, the white supremacy, the, the rebels, the, 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 flag, the rebel flag-waving morons, the Klan members, all of them came out of the woodwork. Think they got free microphone up there to say anything they want and make themselves look as stupid so the rest of the world can see you on YouTube being an asshole. And April is uh, concerned about that. And she's always involved. She goes to these events. She's a speaker at some of them. And she does this all the time while battling cancer. So that's what these blue dots do. They're tough people, baby. Even when they themselves are going through hard times, they're still out there trying to raise their voice for others. Our voice and our vote, baby, that's what we have. In April, amongst so many others. Denise Pickering. I'm not even looking at that. Denise Pickering up in uh, Las Vegas, Nevada. Uh, Rolanda, Gerst Rolanda. Rolanda down in Arizona. Jeff, uh, Jeffrey Dent, Dent. Oh, Lordy. See, y'all get me tongue-tied. Uh, out in Mesa, Arizona. These are people I know that, that are involved. Sarah Lopez down in the valley right now. There's video on my timeline of her unloading 18 wheelers of little donations and getting them to the people that were hurt and flooding down there in the Rio Grande. And, and that happened, and it's not much in the news. Everything on the border is all about the immigration, and there was a flood down there, and these people were hurting. Sarah stepped up. So we have a lot of Blue Dot family members that we are so proud of, and I wish I could call them out every day. The list gets longer all the time. Anyway, what else is going on? We also found out who sent this. 
Zero days since America had an embarrassment, since Trump embarrassed America. And that's from Mary Ann McLaughlin up in Royal Oak, Michigan. Baby, I don't even have to look. I know that name. I know that address. We got your letter. We read the letter. It's a long letter, and we had an enjoyable time reading it. Mary Ann writes us letters that may go over a month's time or three weeks' time. It's dated every time she writes and tells us about everything from the weather to the political outlook in her area. And we so enjoy getting her letters. Anyway, that's it. All right, what happened? Jim Acosta, he, he leaves the, what? Jim Acosta walked out of a news conference? Out of a White House news? Are you shitting me? CNN? Oh, they're fake news anyway. That's what Donnie says. But Jim Acosta got a little upset with Sarah. Sarah Huckabee Sanders turd polishing up there. Because that's what she does every day. That's her job is to get out there. And Jim Acosta tried to nail her down on this Donnie's crap about the media being the enemy of the people. And he was singing that song last night again at his rally up in Pennsylvania about the fake news. Look at them. They're disgusting. That's what he says about the news media. Unless it's Fox Fuse, Rush Limp Dick or Alice Jones or some wacko shit like that. Then, oh yeah, they're, they're speaking the truth. Those are the only ones though. Him and those and Donnie. Everybody else in the news industry is fake news designed to just fool ignorant people. Are you shitting me? Sarah Sanders was asked outright, can you stand at that podium and tell the people of America that the news media is not the enemy of the people? Sarah didn't do that. Sarah did not take the opportunity to stand up there in front of America and tell the American people that the free press is an essential part of our free society. It's what asks the questions that digs into the shit that our government does. That's how Nixon got caught. That's because people were asking questions. Reporters want to know, you know. They got a story. They're going to chase it down for the truth. So Donnie spends all of his time trying to convince the idiot class, the moron class, that whatever they're telling you, whatever you see with your own eyes, that's fake news and don't believe it. Only believe the glorious leader. And that's the kind of crap that Donnie was spewing last night. They had kids behind him this time. You all talk, heard me speak about that before. The morons that are sitting behind Donnie the dick when he is standing up there making an idiot out of himself with all sorts of outlandish statements like, you know, you got to have a photo ID for groceries, which Sarah Sander came out and polished that turd up. Oh, he meant for beer and wine. They asked Sarah, has he ever been to a grocery store? She danced around and polished that turd. Oh, well, that's just not important now. Whether he's ever been. No, he's never been in a grocery store. Are you kidding? He sends somebody to the grocery store. More likely, he sent them to the Kentucky Fried Chicken or McDonald's restaurant place. That's where he eats. Doesn't go to a grocery store, they require an, e an ID, and I'm not sure Donnie has a picture ID. I seen him get in a truck one time, they should have pulled his ass over and asked him for an ID and insurance there, don't forget that insurance, ain't got it, they are going to take your car away or some other shit like that. You know, it's the law, you got to have insurance. Oh, but you ain't got to have law to have uh, health insurance, oh hell no, if you get sick, just go to the emergency room, that's all. Anyway, he... He walked out, and I was proud of him for doing it, uh, beer and wine. Yeah, he was only talking about if you get beer and wine. He was talking about the voter laws, more precisely voter suppression, and that's what he's trying to put. Well, you know, we got to look into the voter fraud, you know, the millions of people that vote. Hey, you know, it's a sad sob story for a sucker. And that's what he plays. He's a con man. He's looking for that sucker. The uh, the millions of illegal voters, you know, that's what he's done. we got to have voter ID law with picture and all that stuff. And you got to own some land there. If you can't, well, you just, that kind of shit. If it wasn't for voter suppression and gerrymandering, the Republicans would not be in charge of this country, of this red area. It would be Democrats if they drew the lines correctly. Because that's how come I say there's a lot of 
Democrats that don't vote because of the gerrymandering. They know their vote doesn't count. But it's going to count this time. So we need to make it count. Anyway, he's trying to, without defranchising and gerrymandering, and with a little Russian help, why hell, the Republicans will win, baby! And that Russian help is still continuing to this day. Well, he went to that Pennsylvania rally. And, oh, yeah, I got it circled right here. He made this comment last night up there in Pennsylvania. Y'all listen to this shit. He said that Russia was very unhappy when Trump got elected. Are you shitting me? Do you remember the guy that you were standing next to at that platform in Helsinki? Remember the guy next to you? His name is Vladimir Putin, who said he was real happy with his with your election and that he helped you and he was wanting he didn't want Hillary. He wanted Donnie the dictator in office. That guy. Standing right next to you, moron. Russians. Are you shitting me? They got video Russians making toasts and celebrating the day you got elected. Cl explaining themselves how they got Donnie elected. Russian collusion? You bet your ass it's spread under every rock you see. Every rock you pick up's got a Russian under it, baby. But he was doing, oh, he said he, that they were the biggest tax cuts in history. Use that line again, which if you look back, Reagan and Bush both gave bigger tax cuts than Donnie Little Dicky tax cut. But his was big enough because his hit right to the rich. The rest of them at least tried to disguise it and give the poor man a little crumb down there. Not Donnie, screw you. And they're doing it again with more loopholes and crap. Uh Oh, shit. Oh, yeah, he said that more jobs, report came up, 3.1 million jobs have been reported in the last 19 months, and his says he can, are you biggest in history? A fact easily checked. In the last 19 months of Obama's presidency, there was 4.1 million jobs gained. Donnie has gained 3.1. We're going the wrong way, people. Donnie's at the, oh, I'm the greatest in history. No, you're not. You're making the numbers go down, you jerk. Everything, all these leading indicators that point to our economy going up. Guess who did that? Obama did that before he went out the door. But Donnie the Dick is doing his best to destroy that and anything else Obama did. He's cutting back on car emissions. Are you shitting me? Are you shitting me? It goes along with everything else this idiot bastard does. You EPA, screw you. Screw your water, your air your roads, anything. You throw the coal ash in the river. Who gives a crap? Car emissions? Hell no. Just plug the damn air. In a time when our, our scientists are telling us that the melting rate of the ice caps are getting faster all the time. Piss on that. We got gas and oil to burn up, baby. And that's who Donny works for. It's the oil in this country. It's the gas, the coal. It's the, it's the oil in Russia. It's the energy companies that pour into Donnie because they're just fossil fuel, baby, not not the renewables. Oh, no, those are demons from hell. Are you shitting me? Wind power and soul power don't want none of that. We want coal. That's Donnie. That's Donnie trying to throw a wrench into everything this country does, trying to dismantle the EPA completely. Everything that this country fought for, and I've said it before, it was my generation that, that saw the crap that was happening that, that the EPA was formed over. And now I'm old enough to sit around and watch a jackass come in here and destroy everything. Screw your parks. I don't care if you like to go hiking. We're going we're gonna to level that down and do some mining here. Then all the mining waste will go right into the bay and kill everything there. Who gives a crap? We do. I hope we still do, and I hope we're instilling that desire to have a clean environment to our kids because that's who we're leaving it to. Anyway, Paul Manafort's trial. His accountant has been up there testifying today, and his accountant, his tax guy, is saying that Paul Manafort never claimed to have any foreign bank accounts. As a matter of fact, decline that answer when they, it's on the question there. Do you own any foreign assets? I see it. I'm not owning no, no, no foreign assets. Hell, Psst. what I bought at the grocery store, is that a foreign asset? Well, where did this come from? Oh, look at there. It came from Sweden. Oh, foreign asset. No. Money, baby. Paul Manafort out there living the lifestyle of the rich and 
infamous, I guess. $10,000 this, $10,000 that, a million dollar this, a million dollar that. All with wire transfers from foreign banks. The only customer to some of these very fancy, you know, $1,000 for a pickle type places or shit like that. Those are, the, are just a wire transfer from a foreign bank. We don't have a, a debit card or a credit card or any kind of normal shit that people use in this country. Hell no, he's going to do wire transfer. Yeah, bank fraud deluxe on this guy. A tax evasion, money laundering, bank fraud, mail fraud, you name it, he's getting convicted for it. And he sits there because he knows. If he stays quiet, even convicted, Donnie will pardon him. That's the president we have. So they're going any other direction they can, baby. They're casting a wide net, evidently a real wide net, because now they're talking to the, what's her name? Christine Davis, the Manhattan Madam. The Manhattan Madam. Uh, Mueller, is. Uh, she volunteered to come in and talk to him. She's been a longtime confidant and worked for Roger Stone for a decade, they said, or more, uh, performing, you know, uh, other duties as assigned, I guess, whatever that she did. But she's been hooked up with him for a long time now. And Roger Stone is hooked up with the Russians and the WikiLeaks shit and all them little strings go out. And guess where they lead? Yeah, they lead to Donnie. Even the little uh, Manhattan madam who uh, was in, I think it was Spitzer or something like that. The, the governor of New York got tangled up. In, but, but she was a madam. And uh, so she's good at... Uh, procuring needed uh, assets that uh, Stone might want or anybody associated with Stone. I guess she procures whatever they need, baby. But she's talking to Mueller, and I'm glad to see it. Don't know what it's all about, uh, but uh, I guess we're going to find out sooner or later what it's all about. I also had a little note on, on, on Paul Manafort that the uh, guy testified that in 19... I mean, I'm sorry, 19, shit, I am thinking old. 2016, Paul Manafort was broke. Paul Manafort, the guy that's out there spending like Fred Flintstone just hit oil before oil was discovered. Uh, he's out there spending like crazy, and he's broke. So he goes to work for Donnie Dick for free. For free? When you're broke and your lifestyle demands that much cash all the time? No, baby. That's a payoff. That's a payoff to whoever holds Manifold's huevos in their hand. You better get over there. This is our candidate. Help him win. You owe us millions. And that's what Paul Manafort, I believe, got caught up in. He was into the Russian mob for a lot of money. A lot of illegal money. And now he got his ass in a crack. And, and, and they told him, go to work for Donald Trump and help him make be president. That's what the guy did. And now he's all caught up in this shit and hoping for a pardon from Donnie. Uh, so I hope he gets his ass in prison and for a long time. Uh, what else? What else is going on? Uh, car emissions done ruled that, talked about that. China's going to do 60 billion more in tariffs. I've seen an uh, interview with, an, I think it was an Iowa farmer this morning, Republican voted for Donnie. And they were asking him, you know, hey, you know, soybeans really crashing like shit. And now you're going to have to take a bailout welfare check from the government there to keep you going. How do you feel about that? He wasn't too happy with it. He, he was uh, questioning Donnie's uh, reasoning and all the tariffs and all that. He kind of still supports. He's floating in the air already. He's not going to vote for him again because most of these people that voted for him, anybody respectable with any brain, have already been embarrassed enough and now are probably trying to hide the fact they voted for him the first time. And, and No, I voted for George George uh, T Tucky. He, he was on there. You didn't see him on there? He's a write-in. I wrote him in. Any kind of bullshit. The only ones still standing up with him are those moron class that you see up there at his rallies clapping like shit when he tells them bullshit lies. When he outright lies to them and they're back there cheering their way that picture's forever, baby. You can show your grandkids the idiot that you were sitting behind, you know, when you get old. Anyway, what else is going on? Mueller, Manhattan, blah, blah. 
Boy, howdy. Oh, I see a little story there. I wish y'all see it. It, it was, uh, uh, I don't know if it was on CNN or if it was on uh, New York Times. I can't remember. A, a lady named Paulette Jordan. I was pretty impressed with this story. Go, baby, because it speaks to a lot of shit that I believe. She is a Native American woman, and she is running for governor up in Ohio. Up in Idaho. <laughs> kind of red area up there been Republican for a long time, but she's doing good up there. And the story was a ho horse riding, gun owning Democrat has a possibility of winning in Idaho. You know why? Because the right, those idiots over there have always tried to paint the left as, oh, we're all wearing leotards and we're out there in the daisies just dancing away and that's who we are. Libtards, you know, snowflakes, they get their feelings hurt real easy. Yeah. Welcome to Libtarb, assholes. This is what a snowflake looks like. This is what we look like out in the country. Hell, we're not like any... I mean, we're just like everybody else around here. We own guns. Hell yeah, we do. Can I ride a horse? You bet your ass I can. That's a Democrat. They're all, they come just like Republicans. They're... What, uh, what, log, log cabin Republicans or something? They're gay Republicans. Are you shitting me? There's gay Republicans. How can you be gay... And be a Republican. I don't know, but they're there. So no, they're, they're, the lines cross all over the place. If, if you get a stereotype of what you think a Democrat is, you got some waking up to do. And you better wake up soon because there's going to be a lot of us clamoring right over this blue wave, baby. What did Ted Cruz say? Them Democrats, they're going to be willing to crawl over broken glass to vote. You bet your ass, Ted Cruz. Go better or work. And I say that with a lot of pride because that man is smoking hot. Eric O'Gean last night, I mean this morning, was at the city council. I missed it and I can't believe I did. He was in a candidate talk with uh, uh, Michael Cloud, our recently elected uh, congressman who has to run again in November. And I missed it and I'm so sorry, Eric. I wanted to be there. I wished I would have been. But anyway, Paulette Johnson... I mean, uh, Jordan, Paulette Jordan riding up there. Uh, I, I'm just so proud of that story because it does. It points to who liberals are. And, and they have us painted as, as fairies or something. We got fairies, baby. And we're proud to have them. Unlike the Republican Party. I don't, that's how come I don't understand log, log, log cabinet. What? Republicans. Are you shitting me? Really? I don't know how that works. How can you vote for a party? That is against the things that you that you live. I just I don't understand it. Never will. That's about all I got. I got a I got a, a letter, uh, an email from Charles Kelly. Charles Kelly. He's down in Costa Rica. And I wanted to tell him thank you. He is a Canadian veteran. Uh, 1974, I think it was, till long long time. And if you don't know, Canadians were involved in a lot of wars that we were involved in and fought side by side of us, and that's sad because the Canadians have done that. I know back since Vietnam. So I appreciate his letter, and uh, I wanted to give him a shout-out, buddy. We really appreciate it. All right. We I had a big bump in our Patreon. I want to call some people out. Herman uh, Darrow, Armando Bremont, Victor Hawkins, Mike Wood, Roseanne Gillard, D. Thompson, and Jessica Zambruno. All joined our Patreon page here recently, so I wanted to give them a shout out. Thank you very much. Our Patreon page grew. Uh, I think we have about 130 members in our Patreon page. We are so thankful for y'all. We had two PayPal, Brian Toolman and Chris Nudson. Thank you very much. Y'all both sent in uh, PayPal donations, and we re really appreciate that. Our family uh, page over there, John Bredevo Speaks Blue Dot Family page, has grown over 4,000. There are 4,072 members over on the fan page. Go over to John Bredevo Speaks Blue Dot Family and go over there and give those people a like and follow them. They're always trying to give information out and keeping people pumped up for this race. Uh, what else I got here? That's about it, man. I'm telling you, baby, I'm sweating. Uh when it's time to impeach. Mm. Every time I take a taste of Miller beer, I sing that song. When it's time to impeach, 
One thing stands clear, Mueller's here. That's all I got. Like, share, subscribe. John Brittavo of Blue Dot in Texas on YouTube. John Brittavo on Facebook. A Blue Dot in Texas on Facebook. John Brittavo Speaks, a Blue Dot family. That's our fan page. Go over there and give candy. And uh, uh, I almost said Don. Don, Don is the guy that started it. Uh, uh, Monica, Kat, and uh, Joe. And uh, they're always working hard over there in, in uh Gonna, Carrie, I think, just joined up a team over there. They're always working hard. At Blue Dot in Texas on Twitter, out my truck window, and anywhere else we can get this message out. The important thing is to keep, stay informed. Be an informed voter. Inform somebody else that needs informing about some information that you might have to, you know, motivate them to, to be ready to vote. But that's the main drive. Get ready to vote. We have 94 days, baby. This ain't going to take long to get there, and we have to be prepared. This wave has to build to that crescendo on that day. So let's make it happen. Y'all have a good one. We'll see y'all later.